Hedgehog Hollow. Today uh, we're talking paper storage and all week we're talking crafty organisation and some studio ideas for you depending on what size of space you have. So with that in mind I've gone for my 12 by 12 and my speciality papers today and I'm standing in front of where you often see me sit for the Facebook lives and I have this rack here which I expanded last week and I now find it's the perfect size. I'm absolutely in love with it. So I got this, this is a We Are Memory Keepers, I will link in the weekly um, update next Monday when I post all of these. You can get this on Amazon, you can get it Simon Says Stamp and also Hobbycraft, you can use your coupon. And I have two of them, which gives me this number of shells, which I find works perfectly. So in the bottom here I have my 12x12 12 12 paper stacks, you can see here, and there's also my envelope paper. Then up here I have my solid uh, cardstock. So there's my whites, my vanillas, my basic black, so all those 12 by 12 the craft. And then the next one up, this is my annual catalogue uh, DSP, so that's the pop of pink there. So they're all in there. Next up, that is my celebration, um, sorry, occasions catalogue, that's my cool treats suite. That's the only 12 by 12 I have so far. Then in here I have all my foil and glimmer card stocks, you can see some of them sparkling there. And then the next shelf up I have those slide those back in again there we go i have my um celebration so this is color in the lines then next up i have my speciality so this is my vellum my um watercolor all those kinds of things are in there my glassine sheets and at the top i have all the little bags that stampin up do so there's glassine bags there's craft bags there's some of the coffee style bags they're all at the top there so that works well and then on the side here i keep um, my paper stacks. This I only have four as you can see so this works really nicely for me I just keep those to the side there just stacked up ne neatly and on this side you can see there's all my kits just to let you know what else is on the shelf. Now each of my um, uh, card stocks or paper packs are kept in the 12 by 12 um, pages, page protectors and they are, each one has a label, so it says, it's got my little hedgehog on it, and then it has the name of the paper stack, it has the item number, and it has the coordinating colours. And that's all the information I took off the label that's on the back of the DSP. So you can quite easily do those yourself. And it's exactly the same when I go to, say, my silver foil. That also works perfectly. It's got a label that says silver foil and the item number. And then, again, if I take my vellum... It's got the item number and it says vellum on it. And whatever one it is, whether it's DSP, speciality, I put all my scraps in here afterwards. So here's a scrap of vellum that I just popped back in here. My pop of pink, you can see in the front there, has all my scraps when I've cut things up. I just put them straight back in there and that works perfectly. Now if you don't have the room um, for one of these racks, and I know a lot of us, and I've been there, are on limited storage. Let's put those back. Then I keep all my retired papers in a Project Life album in the 12 by 12, which in the front does have a couple of 12 by 12 Project Life pages in it. And then this is all my retired um, cardstock. So there's sticky pages, there's canvas sheets, red foil, pumpkin pies, glitter, all those kinds of things. So that may be a solution that works for you because I, I used to fit, um, before I had this room, when I was still in England, I had all of my speciality and DSPs um, split between two of these Project Life albums. So I hope you find that tip useful and we'll be talking crafty storage all week. Tomorrow I'll be showing you how I store my cardstock and how I always have cardstock on hand that's pre-cut. Um, and I've had that now for over a year and I find that works perfectly. So we'll see you again tomorrow. Happy stamping and have a good day. Bye. Morning, welcome to Hedgehog Hollow. Today we're going to talk about paper storage as part of our crafty organisation and storage week. So I have two tubs that I have next to me that are on my desk all of the time. So let me show you how I organise mine. So first of all, I have this tab which is full of all pre-cut uh, cardstock. So I have one tab for neutrals, regals, subtles, brights, and then I have the two uh, current sets of in colours at the back. And then within that, I have these mini tabs that have each colour in, and I have those in alphabetical order within the colour families. Now, these are cut out of uh, comic strip backs the, um, for comic collectors, um, and then I just put a label that I've printed off on my label maker. 
and then I buy packs of either the solid colour, depending how much I use it, or I buy um, the neutrals pack or the subtles pack, and then I cut those into quarters because they're a perfect card front size, and I can cut them down as necessary. So I have all of those in here. And then you'll see at the front there's something slightly different. So I have some scraps of the shimmery white that aren't in my um, pre my envelopes that you saw yesterday. I have some scraps of DSP that when I've been working with something I have these left over. And then there's also a little bit of the glimmer things because occasionally I want to punch out a heart and things. So I just pop those in the front if they're tiny ones that I want to keep for that purpose. Then I also have a second box which is here. This box is a bit of a, um, a catch-all in some ways. But I have half sheets of what was A4 will now be 8.5 by 11 of vanilla white. So I buy a whole pack and go to Kinko's and just have it cut in half. And then I do the same with the Whisper White here. And then I tend to score them in bulk, but I'll show you another day how I do that. And then colours that I use regularly. So I have a whole pack of neutrals that I had Kinko's cut in half for me. I have quite a lot of crumb cake, I have some of the bright colours. So depending on what my themes are for that time of year, so for Easter, I'll probably get a pack of the subtles and have those cut in half in here ready for complete cards. I also keep some watercolour paper here at the front and I keep my um, stamp press or piercing tool, depending how you use it, and my envelopes of my photopolymers. Then at the front here, I keep some little note cards because if I want to just do a little thank you note for a customer or we've missed stamping with you, things like that, I like to have those on hand. So that is how I store um, my day-to-day -day paper, all my other papers in a filing cabinet, which we'll save for another day. But one more thing I have for you today is a giveaway. So today is my birthday and I have a huge box, which I'm about to put a picture of on the blog with an entry and it's full of cards that you've seen me making videos, there's stamp pads, there's one of these lovely gold tins from Celebration, there's twine, there's ribbon, there's washi tape, there's a full set of the uh, 16 to 18 in colour pads, there's a whole box full that you can win by following us on YouTube, following us on Facebook, if you already follow us that's great you still get an entry. You can gain extra entries by ordering every $25 in products. You still get all your normal rewards or my customer appreciation, but you also get five extra entries into my giveaway. And this box is worth nearly $100 worth of product. So that is also there for you today. I will publish a link below this video and it will also come onto the blog. So I hope to, uh, to hear from you and see your entries. And join us again tomorrow for some more Facebook Lives when I'll be looking at storage for small spaces. So we'll see you then. Happy stamping. Bye. Hi and welcome to Hedgehog Hollow. Uh, first of all, I just wanted to say thank you, firstly for all your support with all of my new Facebook Lives and secondly, all the lovely birthday messages I received yesterday. We had a lovely day. It was a snow day here. As you, I don't know if you can, if I turn the camera around, you can see we still have a little bit of snow out the window, uh, but we had a lot yesterday and lots of freezing rain too. Uh, so Maddie had a snow day so she was home with us so it's really nice we went out to lunch we went to the mall and we had a great time so today's tip though is something that I used to use um, when I wasn't fortunate enough to have a room this size and I was just in the side of the dining room at home and I had to keep all my things there and also something that I still use with classes so I'll show you what I mean so this is the Rascog cart that I'm sure you've all seen all over the place um, I also have some of the Target ones, um, so if you live in the US, I actually think the Target ones are slightly better quality. They're the same price as the Rascogs, and of course we've all got Target nearby. And this is Maddie's craft space. So I adapted this for her, I'm trying to put everything back in so I can show you. So the bottom is all full of paper, and she doesn't have a huge amount of paper because most of it's in a filing cabinet over there. What she does keep in here is a couple of packets of retired cardstock she's got. So my old paper shares are in here, and then I've filled her up some Ziplocs with some old class supplies of classes I've done in the past with retired colours. You can see here there's um, all of her spares, as she's labelled it. So the bottom is ideal for cardstock, you can fit 8.5 by 11 in there, and you can also fit 8.5 by 11 by standing it up in there as well so you could put some containers and stand it up all the containers that I showed you yesterday with cardstock also fit in here perfectly so that's another way you could do it then in this shelf she has all of her stamp sets she used to have acquired some extras but she has her stampin up stamp sets here 
She has her own stamping scrub, which I labelled up for her, so she's got her own pink label on it. And then she has a wet and a dry label so that she knows which side is which when she goes to use it. She then has a couple of paper pumpkin boxes, which are perfect storage boxes. So this one has all her adhesives in it and it is labelled on the back. And she's got some glue dots, she's got some foam strips, she's got a snail with her label on it. Something that I recommend if you're a demonstrator, you ask all your customers to label up their snail. There's nothing worse in a class that everyone gets the wrong one. So that's one box she has. Then she has another box with all her embellishments in. And I filled this up with some things about the stitched um, kit at Christmas. And there's all sorts of bits and pieces in here that I pop in there when I have leftovers. It's a great, great way to upcycle your paper pumpkins. And then I'm just going to put this back onto the floor. And I'll tip this so you can see what's in the top. Because the top, I think, is the best bit. There we go. I think you can see that now. So this is the top and I've put a huge amount in here for her. So she's got a pair of scissors. She's got some rolls of ribbon. These are Michael's ribbons, but the Stampin' Up! ones fit in fine. She's got her stamp pads. She's got all the mini ink pads that come in your uh, paper pumpkins. And I bought her one of the Tim Holtz distress ink holders to fit it in. And anything over that is in her ink spots paper pumpkin box. They sit in there nicely. She's got one of the old colour coaches because all her colours are the retired colours. We can fit ink blo uh, yep, blocks for her stamps. She's got some stamp cleaner. She's got some of the 6x6 six six paper pads sticking up here. There's some old rub-ons and embellishments and things that I've given to her. There's a kit that fits in here perfectly. She's got one of the Spellbinders Prism die-cutting machines that's perfect for her. And she loved this little Project Life set, so I bought that for her, so they fit in there nicely. Your Project Life card boxes fit Ooh. in here. Pretty much everything Stampin' Up! sells is, this is big enough to take a paper trimmer. I would stand it in the back here when I had mine. Um, <clears throat> this is a great thing. And a big shot, <coughs> excuse me, I don't think would fit. Um, I have one here, let's have a look. No, it would. So you can also get your big shot. We have a brilliant die cutting station if you had two. So you could put your big shot in the top or your cutting boards along here. Put your big shot out onto the table, you could use it. And all your dies could be nicely organised down here as well. And then when I do a class, I use this concept. I have an empty cart. And into that I put scissors, nails, if I'm providing adhesives. Class kits have a shelf. Um, all the ink pads I need, all the embellishments I need. Everything I need is all in here. Some kitchen towels, some baby wipes, stamp cleaners. So that when I have a class, I roll that out and my ladies don't have to look for anything else. They just look what is in here if they need something. So that is my tip for today. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you again soon. Happy stamping. Bye. Morning everyone. Welcome to Hedgehog Hollow. Today I'm going to show you how I store my paper pumpkins. And if you're a customer of mine, you will recognise this storage as it's the one that I give you when you sign up for a prepaid subscription. So we have these folders. And... Inside the folders, I give you, as you all know, a, enough of these for however long you are prepaid for. And inside, you can then put the paper pumpkin instructions. And in the bottom here, I put the stamp set. And I'm just trying to find, here we go. On the back of this one, I had some leftover stickers. And I just pop those inside of there as well. So any leftover enamel dots, stickers. Um, I'm trying to see what other leftovers we've got. Um... This one back here has got some leftover twine where we did the, the cute little boxes that look like diamonds. So that is my top tip for storing your paper pumpkin. And a couple of them are trying to escape, but they do all fit in here really nicely. And you can fit at least a year's worth into one of these binders. Um, and also, if you do subscribe to Paper Pumpkin through me, you'll know that you get to come and do a class where we decorate the front of these as well. So thanks for stopping by for today's tip, and we'll see you again soon. Bye. Morning and welcome to Hedgehog Hollow. Today is our final instalment of our storage uh, week and next week I've got something really exciting for you. We're going to be doing a workshop in a week 
So one of the workshops that I've been doing here, I'm going to do with you over the course of five days. So on Monday, I'll be showing you what supplies you need to pre-cut. And then throughout the week, we'll build up our cards. We're going to make two cards over the week. So that'll be really um, exciting to do. And then for today, I'm going to show you our ribbon storage. So let me flip the camera around today so I can get down to my drawer. So I found this in Bed Bath & Beyond, but I found you can also get them in, um, oh, sorry, on Amazon. And in our weekly tips roundup, there'll be a link to this. This is an adjustable cutlery drawer. So here, if I take this one out, here, there, this is two pieces and you can slide it. It won't let me slide it together because of the um, ribbon that's in there. But the drawers, the, the bits here slide open and closed depending on the size of the drawer that you have. And it fits rib ribbon spools from stamping up absolutely perfectly. So you can see nothing particularly moves, but I can still got enough that I can get in there. I've got space to expand because I haven't got all of the um, occasions ribbons. And we will, um, from April, get our pre-orders as well for the new um, annual catalogue. So I can put those at this end or in this end section somehow, segregate them off. And I, I absolutely love it. I've tried all sorts of things. Here I am again. So I have tried drain pipes. I have tried um, some of the stamp and storage things. I have tried all sorts of things. And this is one that I've had now probably for three weeks since I moved into the house. And I love it. Nothing's in a mess, and if you see some of my other ribbon drawers, I'm going to do exactly the same because they're an absolute disaster. So that is my top tip for today on ribbon storage. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I also just want to remind you to enter the giveaway. Now, I know there were some problems with it earlier in the week, but they've definitely all been sorted now. So make sure you join our giveaway, and we'll see you next week for our workshop in a week. We'll see you then. Have a good weekend, and happy stamping. Bye.